Welcome to the Embassy Row Project podcast. Today we are going to spotlight one of the latest books by Embassy Row Project founder, James Scott, entitled Green Conflict Minerals. The mad dash to net zero is about to get rough. This book can be found on Amazon in both Kindle and paperback and in other stores where books are sold. Introduction Climate change represents a looming threat that has already begun to impact the fragile existence of millions who exist in destitute poverty, sinking island nations, and regions of the world where the population eats out a day-to-day existence from the diminishing yields from their land. Therefore, the effort to limit the global rise in temperatures to well below 2 degrees Celsius under the Paris Agreement and mitigate the effects of climate change requires Herculean resolve and an internationally unified mission to achieve net zero. A wide variety of technologies aiming to accomplish net zero are being developed and deployed, and their application requires resources that can be limited in supply. The IEA estimates that a concerted effort to reach the goals of the Paris Agreement climate stabilization at well below 2 degrees Celsius global temperature rise, as in the IEA sustainable development scenario, would mean a quadrupling of mineral requirements for clean energy technologies by 2040, and even faster transition to hit net zero globally by 2050 would require six times more mineral inputs in 2040 than today. The main factor is the increased use of electric vehicles and batteries, which is predicted to increase 30 times by 2040. Lithium should see the highest increase in materials used for manufacturing by 2040, over 40 times, followed by graphite and nickel. Copper demand is slated to double due to the expansion of the global electrical grids. Cobalt consumption is estimated to increase 6 to 30 times, depending on the evolution of battery technology and the stringency of climate policies. Rare earth should see an increase of 3 to 7 times, depending on how widely wind power generation is adopted. Largely, these wide margins of uncertainty are due to a general need for more well-defined long-term policies. The total consumption of minerals critical for green technologies is expected to increase from around 8 million tons in 2020 to 30 to 40 million tons by 2050, creating significant opportunities in the field. As a result, this mining sector's value is expected to increase from around $40 billion to over $250 billion in annual revenue. For comparison, Today's global coal mining sector is worth around $420 billion in annual revenue. In the near term, the supply outlook is mixed. The supply of some minerals like mine lithium and cobalt is expected to meet or surpass demand, while for others like rare earths, lithium chemical products, or battery-grade nickel, the demand is expected to exceed current and planned production significantly. The existing operations, planned expansions, and new operations are expected to meet only half the demand for lithium chemical products and cobalt, and around 80% of the demand for copper. This highlights the lack of urgency on the supply side of climate change mitigation, and the relatively long time it takes to develop mining projects from the first deposit discovery to full exploitation. Around 15 years, environmental concerns regarding large mining projects also tend to delay these projects, as local communities are concerned with the impact the operations will have on the local environment. Resources vital to mitigating climate change and not found locally abundant are now classified as critical minerals. Critical minerals, in general, are defined by current dependence on imports of minerals necessary for security and economic prosperity usually with limited domestic sources and, therefore, dependence on one or few trading partners. For the U.S., these critical minerals are assigned yearly by the U.S. Geological Service. They include aluminium, chromium, cobalt, graphite, lithium, manganese, nickel, rare earths, titanium, vanadium, and zinc. Critical minerals vital to green technologies are collectively named green energy minerals, and they include aluminium wind, solar and batteries, chromium wind and batteries, also hydro and geothermal, cobalt batteries, copper wind, solar and batteries, also hydro, geothermal, graphite batteries, iron wind and batteries, lead wind, solar and batteries, also hydro, lithium batteries, manganese wind and batteries, also hydro and geothermal, molybdenum wind, solar and batteries, also hydro and geothermal, nickel wind, solar and batteries, also hydro and geothermal, rare earths wind, silver solar, titanium geothermal, 
Potential use in experimental battery and solar technology. Vanadium batteries, zinc wind, solar and batteries. Also hydro, antimony potential use in an experimental large-scale energy storage. Cadmium thin film PV technology. Gallium thin film photovoltaic PV technology. Germanium transistors for electronic devices. Indium thin film PV technology. Niobium experimental solar and battery technologies. Platinum hydrogen based fuel. Selenium thin film PV technology. Silicon photovoltaic cells. Tantalum electric cars and other electronic applications. Tellurium thin film PV technology. Tin electronics. Automobile components. At the intersection of critical and green energy minerals lies a group of materials that are vital to green technologies and either already in short supply or estimate to become in the next 10 years. Moreover, the mineral supply is likely the decisive factor in the success of the effort to mitigate climate change. Without sufficient supply, no policy or technology will be able to achieve the goals of the Paris Agreement and limit the global temperature rise to 2 degrees Celsius. Therefore, it is worth examining the state of their global supply location, production capacities, strategic implications, and most likely scenarios for the future regarding their availability. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please like, share, and leave a comment. For more information about the Embassy Row Project's International Environmental Commodities Trade Missions, contact us today at embassyrowproject.org.